Inchai Comic Guy here with another Comicsgate unboxing. And this one came in a Gemini mailer and this is very well sealed. I don't know if you can see the glare here, but this has been taped and retaped. So part of me is worried that someone opened this up and retaped it. I'm not 100% sure. Looking at the front of it, it uh, looks like it was done by the Hat Shack Studios. I, I'll be honest, I don't remember who that is or what this book is. So let's go ahead and open it up and let's see what surprise waits for us inside. Cut that seal. There we go. I'm gonna open that up. Hope there's nothing in there that's gonna dox me. Uh, not so far. Oh, that's what this is. We're looking at Chrono Mechanic. All right. Cool deal. And we've got some items taped right here. Looks like it's a button and what looks like a guitar pick. All right. Okay, so we're gonna toss that out of the way. So yeah, Chrono Mechanic by Art Tybert. Okay, so this is definitely a book that I've been looking forward to. I'm glad that it actually arrived finally. And look, it's signed. Although I have to admit, that's not much of a signature. But it is signed. So I'm gonna go ahead, pause the video, look inside, read the book, come back and give you a review. So hold on one moment, I'll be right back. Well, I just finished reading Chrono Mechanic, and I've got to say, this book, uh, this book's kind of a mixed bag, and that, well, that's really disappointing. I mean, the packaging was, you know, fine. Uh, there was a bit of an issue with the fact that the surface was so shiny and reflective, you could actually see my face in the book, so. I had to put up, as you may have noticed, an image in order to go ahead and protect my own identity. And even right now, I'm wearing a mask and sunglasses just to avoid that problem again. So I'm not gonna give any points off for the packaging. I mean, we got some cards over here that came with the package of short characters. No character descriptions or info on the back of the card, which is really disappointing. But the artwork's nice to look at. We got a little chrono mechanic patch if you want to put that on your jacket. We got a copy of the Lucky Pick. And we got a little chrono mechanic button that you can put on your baseball cap. So, you know, it's, it's nice packaging overall. But the big thing is, of course, the Gemini Mailer. Uh, there was nothing to identify the company or that this was Chrono Mechanic on the Mailer, which may have bumped this up. So, packaging, you're looking at getting a three out of five stars as far as that's concerned. Then we get to the cover art, and uh, the cover art looks fine. I mean, we have our main characters, and we have our protagonist, Doug, right here. It's nothing spectacular. It gives you a idea of the artwork inside, and uh, Art Tybert spent a lot of time inking Art Atoms back in the day, and that is actually the style that this reminds me of. I really get that Art Atoms kind of feel from it, and it's clear that all the time that Art Tybert spent inking Art Atoms, that, you know, he definitely took a lot of positive things away from that relationship as far as art's concerned. So, I would give the cover artwork, again, it's fine. It doesn't really tell us a whole lot about what's going to happen to it. It suffers from the same problem that a lot of covers do nowadays, and that the cover artwork is just showing characters. It's kind of boring. I would give the cover artwork mm, three out of five stars again. It, it's serviceable, it gets the job done. It's not lying to the audience like some covers do, but it's not spectacular. As far as the interior artwork is concerned, the interior artwork looks great. I mean, this is some of Art Tybert's best work. So I really, really like 
uh, the designs of the characters. Uh, I did find it weird that the character designs change. So when they're in their chrono mechanic get-ups, you know, this is what they look like. Okay, they look like a bunch of blue collar stiffs. But when they're not, you know, you got one looks like a caveman, one looks like an Italian artist, one's an alien. And that's kind of a little bit weird. So I'm not sure why he made that choice. I actually like the characters in their original design versus their suited up design. So that's just a little qualm from me, a little nitpick on my side. But the artwork looks great. Uh, I would actually give the interior artwork four out of five stars, and I would also get the uh, coloring. And the coloring was Priya Pilani and Hack Shack Colors. So yeah, they did a great job on the coloring. So I really enjoyed the coloring as well. Um, yeah, again, four out of five stars. It's, they're not breaking new ground, which is what you would need to do to get five stars, but it is definitely some of the best coloring that you can get in a modern comic book. So I'm really good as far as that's concerned. Uh, the lettering. This is actually a bit of a challenge. Uh, who did the lettering here? Uh, Jeff Ackleberry. So, he tries to differentiate characters by slightly changing up uh, the font being used for each person in the course of the book. And he relies on those subtle differences in the font when you've got events occurring and one person talking over another or you've got uh, balloons where it's going to be discussing things like background information exposition things of that nature so it's easy to get lost in some situations but other parts of the lettering are really top-notch and done incredibly well so when you factor in the positives and the negatives uh, those that detract from the story and those that complement it I'm afraid that what could have been a four out of five stars unfortunately gets knocked down to a three. And then that brings us to the writing. Uh, this is the disappointing part. This is not a well-written book. I mean, it's not terrible. I mean, it's certainly not pandemic levels of awful, but it's not good either. Uh, the biggest problem is the opening. You see, the first two pages introduce us to what Chrono Mechanic is. And then, from page three until page 21, we have exposition. Oh my lord, heavy, heavy handed exposition that goes on until page 21. And after that, we get back to where we started with the first two pages. And it just, it's out of place. It's distracting. I mean, the, this first 22 pages worth of story, an entire comic book, I had to start and stop about six times. It was so bad. The exposition was so frustrating. I mean, you just got irritated by it. And the characters are made thoroughly unlikable during the exposition portion of the book to the point where I, I, I just didn't want to read it about it anymore. After you get there, however, when you get to page 22 on forward, everything picks up. You're getting a much better sense of the story. You're enjoying yourself. Uh, even with uh, some exposition components in there, they're integrated into the storytelling, so it works way, way better. Uh, you could literally read the first two pages, skip everything else until page 22, and then continue with your day. You're really not missing all that much here. You're getting some, again, background stories, and again, the exposition. Literally all the exposition in this story could have been done in two pages. Two pages, 12 panels, you would have been done. But I'm afraid that Art Adams and his wife, uh, I think it's his wife, um, Pamela, 
If that's your daughter, I apologize. I think it's his wife. Um, the Tyberts broke the central rule of writing, which is show, don't tell. And having the first 22 pages of your comic book dominated by exposition, telling everybody what's going on, instead of having it organically flow from the narrative itself. I mean, you, you could have had them plunge straight into a problem, trying to solve the problem, and then trying to explain to the rookie why they're doing what they're doing as they're dealing with an issue. I mean, there's, a, there, there's actually a plot element that could have been used. Uh, right here, again, we go to the first two pages, which introduce us to Chrono Inc., and then we pick right back up with Chrono Inc. here, and they launch a probe. It literally could have gone here to here, activated the probe, and as soon as they got to using the probe, have the probe run around the ship, and have the characters explaining to the probe what's going on as they are at the same time fixing the ship, which was damaged uh, by these little chronomites, which was damaged during an attack, and they're fixing the ship. They could have been doing something, fighting the chronomites. They could have been fixing their ship and trying to patch it up so they can get to their job. And while they're doing that, explaining to the rookie what's going on and seeing the rookie's observations. And that could have been your first 22 pages of your book. That was not the first 22 pages of your book. Instead, 22 pages of impenetrable exposition. I mean, oh, that was so frustrating. So, uh, if you can get past the first 22 pages, the story at that point is pretty good. It's pretty interesting, it's fun. Uh, the artwork again is good. Oh, those first 22 pages kill this book. It just stabs it right in the heart and murders it right there. I, I would literally tell anybody, if you get this book, skip the first 22 pages. Art, if you do a re-release of this book, um, yeah, again, keep your first two pages, go to the probe, and then Go ahead and do a short little story about them fixing their ship instead. This, see you'll notice on here, the credits, there's one thing missing. Editor. Art would benefit from having an editor. Because an editor, a proper editor, could have identified these problems and had him fix it before he went to press. Uh, Chrono Mechanics, I, I, I'm gonna have to wait until I see his next campaign and his next story and what it's gonna be about to decide whether or not I'm going to buy another book for the Chrono Mechanics line because I was so disappointed in the first part of this story and so, I mean, again, when I had to put the book down a half dozen times just to pinch my bridge of my nose in order to avoid the oncoming headache from the mountain of exposition that you bashed into my skull, you've done something wrong. And this is a book where I would say the writing, the writing is only going to be two out of five stars. It's actually below average. The rest of the story brought it up. Otherwise, this would have been a one. But yeah, the writing is two out of five stars. I'm gonna have to see something where you prove to me that the next book is worth getting art before I go ahead and back it. So, better story next time. Get yourself an editor. Fix that problem. But with that being said, our final score is 3.16 out of five stars, rounding to the nearest whole number, that's three out of five. So yeah, Art Tybert's Chrono Mechanics is an okay book, it's not great. Uh, it's not the worst thing I've ever read, but again, it could benefit from some editorial improvements as far as the storytelling is concerned. The, but the artwork is really good, the coloring is really good, 
all the foundational elements, say for the writing, are there in order to go ahead and make this a really great ongoing series. So with luck, Art Tybert and his team will make those changes, make those improvements, and by the time we get to the next Chrono Mechanics book, I can give it my endorsement and we'll all have a really fun book to read. Fingers crossed. That being said, I'm going to let you all go. Thank you again for watching this video. Like, subscribe, and do the thing, and I'll talk to you all next time.